Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to discuss the sum product function. So we're going to discuss the basics of the sum product function, and we're going to see how to use it to sum and count with multiple criteria. So at a very basic level, the sum product function, what it does is that it multiplies the corresponding items in two or more arrays and returns the sum of the results. So let's see that in action. Basically, if you give the sum product three arrays, so we've got three arrays here, array one and array two and array three, and an array is basically just a group of values. So if you give it these three arrays, what it will do is that it will multiply the corresponding items in each array. So it will multiply the first item in array one by the first item in array two by the first item in array three. It will return the result. It will do that for each item. So for the second item as well, it will just multiply second item in array one by second item in array two by second item in array three and return the result. It will do that for each item and then it will sum the results of the multiplication. So as you can see here, the first step is multiplying the items. Second step, which is the green one, is summing up the results of the multiplication. So you can see here, 192 is the summation of all these multiplications. So some product will do these two steps in just one step. So what you would do is that you'd write equals some product. And as you can see here, it will expect some arrays from you. The first array is mandatory and then any more arrays are optional. So you can give it the first array and then put a comma here and then you give it the second array and put a comma and then you give it the third array and you close the brackets, press enter and you get the result. Now you actually don't have to put commas between your arrays. You can also just put all the arrays in the first argument, which is array one, and then just put a multiplication sign between them. So you can see here, we only have one argument now given to the sum product function, but this single argument contains all the arrays, but we put a multiplication sign a star between them. So as you can see here, we're multiplying array one by array two by array three. And if you press enter, you also get the same result. And actually this is a way that people use some product to do more powerful calculations than just this kind of simple calculation. And we will show that later on in the video. Now let's see what happens if we give some product just one array. If we give some product just one array, so if we give it only array one and close our brackets, it will actually act like a sum function. So it will just sum that particular array. So you can see here it gives us 20 because this is the summation of all these numbers. Now let me tell you that the sum function is actually able to do what the sum product function does, but you usually need to press control shift enter. So if you write equals sum and you select your three arrays and you multiply them by each other, you multiply array one by array two by array three and put them inside a sum function, you can actually get the same result that you get from the sum product, but you have to press control shift and enter and you get the same result. So as you can see here, we get the result of multiplication of three arrays here, 192, the same as we got from some product. However, that is not the case anymore in Office 365 because now with the introduction of the new dynamic arrays in Excel, now you don't have to press Control Shift and Enter. So you can only press Enter and it will still work. But this is only in Office 365. But so if you have an older version of Excel, you will still need to press Control Shift and Enter to get the result. But this is actually the advantage of some product over some function because for some product, you can actually multiply arrays without needing to press control shift and enter, or that used to be the case until Office 365, but with some, you cannot do that before Office 365. And let me know guys in the comments below if you'd like me to create a video about the new dynamic arrays in Excel. One more thing I need to add as well is that if you need to use the sum product function to multiply arrays, your arrays need to be of the same size. We can also use the sum product function to sum and count with criteria, just like the sum if, sum ifs, count if, and count ifs 
functions. And if you don't know how these functions work, I have a video on my YouTube channel that explains how these functions work and I'll leave you the link below in the description. Now, in order to use the sum product function to sum and count with criteria, we do something called an array comparison operation, which is basically comparing an entire array against our criteria. So let's see how that works. So we have our data set here where we have the product and the color and the sales and our criteria is product one and blue. So basically we need to get the count of rows where we have product one and blue at the same time. So I'll write equals some product. And first of all, we need to give it our first array comparison operation. So we're going to compare our first array here, which is the array of products against our first criteria here, which is product one. I'm going to absolute product one. And if you're going to drag the formula down, you should absolute the array as well, but we're not going to drag the formula down in that case. So you got to give it this array comparison operation where you compare the whole array against your criteria and you got to put this array comparison operation between brackets. So you can see here, I put the whole array comparison operation between brackets and this will result in boolean values in trues and falses so if you highlight this array comparison operation and you press f9 you can see here you get trues and falses i'm gonna press ctrl and z here on my keyboard and then you're gonna multiply that by another array comparison operation which is the array comparison operation for your second criteria so i'm gonna compare this array here against the second criteria which is blue i'm going to absolute that as well and you got to put the whole array comparison operation this whole thing in, in between brackets as well and this will also result in true and false values as you can see here now if we close our brackets for the sum product function and we press enter we get two so why did we get two actually what's going to happen here is that you're going to have an array of trues and falses here and another array of trues and falses and you're going to multiply the items of each array this is what the sum product function does right and whenever you have a true multiplied by a true you're going to get a one because excel will treat a true as a one and a false as a zero so when you have a true which is a one multiplied by another true which is a one you get a one if you have a true multiplied by a false you get a zero and so when you add up the result of multiplications of the corresponding items of the array you get the count which is two now let's see that in kind of a breakdown or a slow motion here so i've created this table here for clarification you can see here our first criteria is product one and second criteria is blue now what happens here is that we compare this product one on the first row against our criteria which is product one and we get a true here and we compare the blue against our criteria which is blue and we get a true here and we do that on the second row so here is product one we get a true but here it's green and we get a false and we do that for each and every row and as you can see here we only get two rows where we have a true and a true and this is our result we have only two rows that meet both our criteria at the same time and this is the boolean multiplication result which is the result of multiplying this by this a true by true is a one a true by false is a zero okay and so basically what's going to happen is that the sum product will add the results of these multiplications and we have only two ones which would give us a two now if we need to get as well the summation of the sales here we need to multiply by a third array and our third array is going to be our sales and this is not going to be an array comparison operation we're just going to multiply by the array so we're going to actually write the same formula here however we're just going to expand on it by putting another multiplication sign and we're just going to include this array and you don't even have to put it in brackets actually so i put it in I'm putting it in brackets, but you don't have to put it in brackets. It will still work the third one if you don't put it in brackets because this is not an array comparison operation. This is just an array. And if you press enter here, you get the summation of sales for product one and blue. 
as you can see here, if we sum these two values in green here that meet our criteria, we get 9,005. Now I've got a drop down menu here that I created. So if you change the criteria, you can see here that the conditional formatting I created as well will react to that and it will show us the rows where we have trues for both our criteria. As you can see here, we'll highlight these rows in green and you can see here as well that our calculation reflected the different criteria that we selected as well. Now, while sum if, sum ifs, count if, and count ifs functions can sum and count with criteria, just like some product, and they can even do it faster, their calculation time is faster than some product, so they are better than some product in that sense, understanding how some product sums and counts with criteria can help you understand how to use it to sum and count with or and and conditions, which the sum if, sum ifs, count if, and count ifs functions cannot do. And we're going to explain that next. Now let's see how we can do summing and counting with or and and conditions using some product. So we have this data set here where we have the month and the sales rep and the quantity sold and the price. And let's say we wanna get the count of the rows and the quantity sold and the revenue, which is basically the price multiplied by the quantity for John or Sue and January. So that means we're going to get the count for the rows containing either John or Sue and January at the same time. So let's see how we can do that with the sum product. So equals sum product. And then our first array is going to be an array comparison operation between the array for the sales reps here. So this is going to be equal to John and we're going to absolute John here. And we're going to put the whole thing between brackets as we agreed before. And then to do an or condition, we need to put a plus sign. So we're going to add that to another array comparison operation, which is going to be the array of sales reps as well, equal to Sue. And I'm going to absolute it as well. And I'm going to close my brackets. So this is basically one array. These two array operations where I'm going to consider them as one array. It's either John or Sue. That's one unit. I'm going to put them between brackets here. So that's one thing. And then I'm going to multiply that because I have an and condition. And when you have an and, you put a multiplication sign. So I'm going to multiply that by an array comparison operation between the month column and Jan here in our case. And I'm going to put it as well between brackets. So we have two criteria in or condition all put between brackets, and then we will multiply that by another criteria, one more criteria, which is ended with them. And I'm going to close the whole sum product function and press enter. So now, as you can see here, it's giving me four because I've got four rows, as you can see here, to break it down and show it in slow motion, if you will. I've got four rows here containing either John or Sue and January. As you can see here, the rows where we have two trues meeting our criteria are highlighted in green, and we have four of them. Now, to get the quantity sold, the summation of quantity sold for all these rows, all we do is, is that we just copy the formula and we add on it, we expand, and we put a multiplication sign here and we multiply by the quantity sold. And if we press enter, we get the summation of the quantity sold for our criteria. So as you can see here, if we check the summation for the highlighted rows here, we get 34. Now to get the revenue, I'm just going to copy the formula and actually expand on it. So we're going to multiply that by the price. Multiplying the quantity by the price gives us the revenue. So if you press enter, you get the summation of the revenue and we can actually check by creating a revenue column here, which is going to be the multiplication of the price by the quantity sold. And if we drag the formula down and let's give it the same conditional formatting here. And as you can see here, if we highlight only the green rows, you can see here we get 102,149. We're also able to calculate the average price per item sold which is going to be a weighted average because it's going to take into account that we have different quantities of different products with different 
prices sold. And that is simply by dividing the total revenue by the total quantity sold. So if we divide the revenue by the total quantity sold, we're going to get the average price per item sold. Okay, guys, so this is how we can use some product to do summing and counting with criteria. And I would like to thank Leila Gorani as she gave me the inspiration to do this video. She has a video as well about some product. I'll leave you the link below in the description. I'll leave you the link for her YouTube channel as well. She's a great Excel instructor. So thank you guys for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Thank you for watching the video. If you like the video, press the like button. Make sure to share it with your friends as well. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you'd be notified with each new video. You can download the example workbook through the link below in the description. Make sure as well to check my Excel courses, links below in the description as well. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.